Good morning. It's Tuesday, November the 7th. I'm Todd Duplantis, and you're watching Up to the Minute. We've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour. Good to have you with us this morning. My co-host this Tuesday, uh, Diana Burrow-Borgos, who is the Communications Director at HCC Southeast College. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Todd. How is everybody doing? Have you looked out the window and see how beautiful the weather is? It I'm is loving this weather. There. I know. Yeah. Finally, some nice weather in Houston. It's supposed to be a little bit cooler later this week, but as long as it's not in the triple digits, it's we're happy about that because this was a long summer, Diana. That is correct. It's definitely a win for us. And we I can't wait to get out there and just kind of walk a little mile. <laughs> Yeah, get out and enjoy it while you can. All right, so uh, you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube. We are here just about every morning HC season session, Mondays through Fridays. And of course, uh, live at 10 a.m. Diana, they can also catch us in social media anytime and also on our cable channel. That is correct, Todd. You can catch us on our Facebook page, our district HCC Facebook page on X, formerly known as Twitter, and on all our uh, YouTube at 10 a.m., um, 5 p.m., and um, anytime, anytime in our YouTube channel. So just come and find us. <laughs> Check it out. That's right. Okay, Diana, you were, uh, you know, we're devoting this whole show to a speaker series. It's happening out at Northwest mm -hmm. College, and you're going to be speaking with uh, this next person in just a little while. Greg Turner is the founder of Today Came Early and the first speaker in HCC Northwest speaker series. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. How are you all? We're doing good, and we're good. looking forward to hearing about uh, your uh, speaker series or your uh, your uh, taking part in that. We'll, we'll be with you in about ten minutes or so. Hey, sounds great. All right, kicking things off, uh, we're talking with to the president of HCC's Northwest College about launching this series. Dr. Zach Hodges joins us now. Welcome back to the show, um, Dr. Hodges. You're launching your president speaker series with Design Against the Universe happening this Thursday. Before we get to the details of this particular uh, event, tell us uh, about why you wanted to have a speaker series. Um, well, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm naturally curious. And there's so many dynamics coming at us in every direction, so many trends in education that uh, it's just hard to capture uh, everything. One thing I know is that Creativity is kind of the number one skill for the 21st century. And, uh, and, and what, is, what is creativity? I think we're all in the process of defining that. So I believe our students should be exposed to uh, uh, outside the classroom kinds of stimulus uh, that uh, will you know, enhance their thinking and then, of course, improve their performance in college. Obviously, it's important to have the students learn outside the classroom, but tell us about the importance of connecting with industry leaders uh, outside the classroom as well. Well, I think we, I love our faculty and our faculty are outstanding, but there's so many people that are in, outside of the institution that, and we have the technology now to access those people. And uh, although this is a traditional in 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 uh, a presentation, uh, we need to take advantage of those experts out there that are really redefining the 21st century, redefining ourselves and challenging us to think in new ways. Do you, uh, will this be taking place at the West Houston Institute? I mean, obviously the importance of having it there. Katy Campus. Katy Campus, okay. Yeah, 30 this Thursday, 1.30 to 3.00. Real excited about Greg. Greg's kind of a Renaissance guy, you know, MIT guy, architect, uh, futurist, now getting his doctorate in geography. So he covers all the bases uh, so, as far as universal kind of thinking. He'll be here on Thursday at the Katy campus. Tell us about some of the other speakers you brought together with the series. Well, uh, you know, that's in the works. This is the first one. Uh, uh, that I've called the president's uh, you know, speaker series. So, uh, for example, we have a Rice professor that lives out in the Katy area that's uh, working uh, working on artificial intelligence. We just have lots of different kinds of of uh, uh, talent that's available to us uh, in Houston, in you know West Houston. 
uh, and I want our students to be exposed to it and faculty and staff. So not only students, but faculty and staff as well. And me. <laughs> Why do you think that it's important for students to hear about skill sets and also mindsets for the 21st century? I mean, obviously, uh, you want them to, to, to broaden their horizons. But why do you think this is so important for our students right now? I, I want to open the top of their heads and core things in. Uh, you know, I think that our students are not. Uh, they're smart, but they're not sophisticated in. Uh, the ways of the world and the way uh, people are thinking. So I want them to be challenged. I want them to say, oh, wow, I've never thought about that. Uh, to have those aha moments that I think we've all had along the way, maybe we can make those happen for them. How often do you expect to have this? Uh, once a semester, a couple times a semester? What are your thoughts there? A couple of times a semester is what I'm shooting for. So uh, this uh, maybe we're not going to get the second one in this semester, but uh, uh, we will in the spring. And there's always uh, opportunities, I think, for outside the classroom learning. So it's not only through the president's uh, series, but uh, it's a mindset that I think all our faculty staff, including me, should should, you know, should should promote. I know uh, you're at the West Houston Institute this morning, but the Katy campus moving along. I imagine you're pretty excited about where uh, it's uh, been open now for a couple of years. Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are there with the Katy campus. Oh, well, uh, a year and a half, I guess, a uh, year and four months. So we're over 4,000 in enrollment. Uh, students love the campus. Uh, today's students are different and we need to challenge them. And I think that campus and our approach to learning uh, that we have at that campus is challenging our students in new ways that they're comfortable with and that th and the way they learn, not the way we want them to learn or the way we learned, but the way they learn. You're at the, as I mentioned, you're at the West Houston Institute. Tell us a bit about the, because you're in the collaboratorium right now. Tell us a bit about that. Well, I think this is, uh, this is where we do our design thinking, our strategic thinking, our uh, uh, brainstorming and, uh, and, and again, when we get people together around a common topic uh, and focus on the we, we all learn something. You know, we don't do it individually. Uh, we do it collectively. So the collaboratorium is a space where uh, we intentionally put people together, take them through a process and end up with, uh, you know, with uh, some results. So uh, this is the West Houston Institute is the innovation hub for Houston Community College, and we're really proud of taking that to the next level. Dr. Hodges, we appreciate you joining us on the show this morning. We're going to have all the information on the speaker series and the first one coming up on Thursday. But right now we've got and we'll have some more information in our post after the show. Right now we've got your first speaker on tap, and I think Diana is going to be talking with him. That's correct, Todd. I am so excited to hear um, this initiative from Dr. Uh, Zach Hodges. He is amazing. He's an innovator. And uh, it is my pleasure to welcome the new um, and the first speaker for this uh, series, Mr. Greg Turner, founder of Today came early. And again, I say, said it again, first speaker of the HEC Northwest President Speaker Series. Welcome to the show, Mr. Turner. Let's begin with how first design, how design is different in a digital age that um, it definitely is, it's a little interesting how it was before in earlier years. Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure, you bet. Uh, and Happy to be here, Diana, and thank you, Zach, for giving me the opportunity to uh, try to make whatever contribution I can here to the speaker series. Well, in the now my career, I'm a recovering architect. Uh, my career started back in the uh, early 1970s, uh, so 50 years ago, and a lot has changed uh, in that time frame. And what I would say, the biggest difference, well, uh, again, just a little bit of background, I started out hand drawing. Everybody used to hand draw back in those days. And one of the first big technological breakthroughs was the fax machine, and where we used to be able to fax drawings back and forth to our consulting engineers. And the way you did this is you wound a little eight and a half by 11 drawing around a spool 
and it took about 10 minutes for that spool to turn and then probably another hour to two hours for that information to get over to the engineer's office. Things are a lot different now and a lot better. The big difference I think is that um, back before all these advances in technology, uh, design was what I would call an additive process. That is you began sort of with a clean slate and you developed concepts. And as you developed concepts, you started adding in and filling in the details and working back and forth between conceptual thinking and more detailed thinking to develop design. Uh, and so you were always uh, sort of adding information, adding data, adding ideas uh, to the concept and building upon that. Well, now what technology has done is it's made uh, it more of what I'm calling an editive process. There's so much information available electronically now that you can pull uh, information and data out of your electronic library or from online sources or wherever else you can think of. And then you massage them and adapt them and fit them uh, to the initial concept. Now, the, the good thing about that is that there's a lot of good information out there that you can use. Um, and uh, it helps with quality. Uh, it helps with, you know, building upon, the, again, the knowledge that's already out there. The challenge, I think, is that it makes it a little bit too easy sometimes to just tap into the sources that are out there. And designers really have to challenge themselves to, even if they're not actually any more draw, hand drawing and, and adding as they go along, they need to challenge themselves to think that way. It's a different thinking process uh, with the new technology than it used to be. And in order to make sure you just don't get uh, into a, a situation where you're just pulling stuff off and tweaking it uh, and not really adding new ideas and new thinking, uh, you have to discipline yourself. And it's it's a different intellectual process. Well, quite interesting that you said that discipline is part of designing. Um, and to me, that's, that's something very important that sometimes our, this new generation is um, might take might take it for granted, especially because technology makes things so easy for them nowadays, right? Yes. Um, one of the things that it, it piques my interest is how sustainability becomes part of the design process. So shouldn't everything that we design last for a long time to help sustainability? Well, the I th one of the key challenges in design these days is to reconcile or to align time with material. And uh, just to elaborate on that a little bit, you know, anything that you design needs to be useful, first of all. And in back centuries ago, all that meant is that it was convenient for something to be used. Now you have to add in that it has to be useful economically as well. It has to add value to whatever uh, whatever endeavor you're undertaking. Uh, and also a, uh, any object that was designed had to be materially stable, so to speak. So durable, it, it was intended to last. Uh, and uh, an object also had to be beautiful. Now these conceptions have changed and so now what you have, again, in terms of the utility of an object, when I say object, I'm using it in a broad sense. It could be a building, it could be a spoon or a, uh, an iPhone. Uh, it, it has to be useful uh, to be able to be used. It has to add value. Uh, and it also has to be sensory now. It can't just be beautiful to look at. You have things called haptics, which is relates to tactility uh, of materials. Uh, you have the, there's a more holistic sense of the sensory exp experience of objects that has to be incorporated in design. And now what you have to do is instead of making something useful and sensory forever, you have to make it useful and sensory for the specific period of time that humans are interested in it uh, and find it enjoyable. So 
Uh, that doesn't always mean that it has to last a long time or should last a long time. Now, that, that's a key challenge to design because if you make something that is durable, uh, but because of obsolescence or technology or other factors, it becomes um, not useful anymore, yet it's still materially stable, then you have waste. And, uh, you know, waste is not good. Waste is what we want to eliminate to make the world more sustainable. And you have to try the nothing. You can never really perfectly align time, material stability and usefulness. But the closer you get, the less wasteful it is and the more sustainable the planet is. Very. Oh, but so interesting, Greg. And and. and I also wanted to ask you, is, is this sign something that um, only certain people possess? Because I have a bunch of ideas and just I want to make them to, uh, into a reality. So could I be like the artist that I am, um, go out there and design something? And, and um, Or is it somebody very special that could design and, and is a skill that they need to only certain people can possess? Well... I'll start by saying Albert Einstein said that creativity is intelligence having fun. Now we all have intelligence and we all can have fun. So we all can be creative. So uh, there's no reason to, to think that just because you're not in a design field, so to speak, in an artistic field or you know music or designing products, industrial design, that you can't be creative. You can be creative in anything that you do, um, whether it's a, the processes that you work on at work, the methods that you use, uh, as well as any objects that you might design. So uh, design has a wide applicability across all human endeavor. And that's what to me makes it so intriguing and, and makes it so interesting. But uh, in addition to that, there are three, aspects to what I call the sweet spot of creativity. And by utilizing these three aspects, you can help make yourself more creative. And the first one is the social aspect. That is being with people who can add ideas, being with people who you can have good conversations with. Uh, so uh, anybody can do that. And that helps foster your creativity and your thinking and your uh, imagination. Uh, the second one is human physiology. It's it's mm -hmm. your body, what your body experiences. So what I like to do, for instance, is go out to Big Bend and go hiking. And there you experience the beauty and wonder of nature. And uh, you always come away from there. I always come away from there with ideas and thinking uh, that helps me uh, with whatever creative activities I have on tap after that. Uh, and, and then uh, finally, in addition to the social and the physiological, uh, you have your cognitive abilities, which is just your thinking. So you can always improve your thinking just by reading, drawing. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, drew to think, drew to see, and drew to create. And so by engaging your body and your mind together, uh, everybody, can improve their level of creativity and enjoy what they do much more. Mr. Turner, those are some wise words of uh, encouragement. Um, definitely, I'm going to follow them because I do have plenty of ideas. So I might be good. contacting you later <laughs> for sure. But uh, finally, and we only have a couple of uh, uh, seconds left. Okay. How will effective communication skills benefit you for future careers as a software designer or anything that you would like to kind of set your mind and be free as, as an artist or a designer per se? Well, you have to be able to, to communicate. And the best way to learn how to do it well is to practice and do it a lot. Now, I've, you know, I'm 70 years old. I've been doing it uh, ever since I started my business almost 40 years ago you you had to sink or swim you had to get in there and just practice and just learn and not be afraid to make mistakes because you'll make plenty of them. great practice, practice makes perfect 
<laughs> For sure. That's that's definitely a, a, a good advice and some wise words again. So thank you, Mr. Greg Turner, founder of uh, Today Came Early and the first speaker of our HCC Northwest President Speaker Series. We'll have all of your info after our show. Thank you so much again for joining us. And now we're going to go you. ahead and of, of course. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to some amazing announcements that we have. Um, we actually have free haircuts at Central Central Community College at, at Central HEC Community College um, is offering free haircuts again on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. So today is one of those days, 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on Wednesdays at the J.B. Widely building at our central campus. So if you need to call or um, you need to get more information, just stay after our show and we will have all that information for you. We also have a girl chat Wednesdays this week, actually this tomorrow. Um, HCC Counseling is offering this women's mental health support group from 3 to 4 p.m. on Wednesday, November 8th at the Harmon Building, room 117 Central Campus. So if you want more information, we will have everything after our show. Now we're going to have a series of amazing ribbon cuttings for our digital access centers. Um, and this is in a great, uh, an amazing initiative from our uh, interim chancellor, Dr. Margaret Ford Fisher. And we're going to have the digital access center, HEC Northwest ribbon cutting ceremony um, at the A Leaf Hayes campus. And it will be held, I believe tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's gonna be Wednesday, November 8th at 10 a.m. at the HEC A Leaf Hayes campus. I know we're gonna be seeing Dr. Hodges there cutting the ribbon as well, so exciting. Um, you don't need to register, but it is open to everyone who is interested in attending. Homes for the Holidays, uh, the game afoot is a drama uh, from the drama department. They are uh, getting us with a mystery. It's December of 1936 and a Broadway star known uh, for his portrayals of Sherlock Holmes invites fellow cast members to his Connecticut castle for the weekend for fun. This is gonna happen Thursday, Friday and Saturday, November 9th through the 11th and Monday, November 13th at the HEC Stafford Fine Arts Center. And it's free guys. And of course, we're gonna have um, our annual giving campaign. So everybody, HEC staff and faculty, Let's get our wallet ready. We need to contribute to our uh, I Love HEC fundraiser campaigns. So check our show after the um, the post after the show and get all the information about how you can contribute to I Love HEC fundraising campaign. And we also have our spring registration and it's now open and it's ongoing, guys. So we have online anytime, online on schedule, hybrid, in-person, hybrid lab. We have it all, guys. So uh, to learn more about the HEC programs, start dates, and options to cover costs, just go to hcs.edu backslash apply. So we are, we're going to have an incredible um show tomorrow. So please stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time here at Up to the Minute. Thank you, guys. At Houston Community College, we make your lessons matter. Open the door to real world education, where passions become careers. Find out more at hccs.edu and let your success take flight. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? 
I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I don't remember how it started. Talk to Dad. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. I want to eat. Apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I oh, do. Easy. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Things could be stranger, but I don't know how. I'm going through changes now. Spend a lifetime trying to figure it out. I'm going through changes, through all of the strangeness. I'm going through changes now. Love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat.